שלום. Happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath! I would like to everyone to stand up, please. Let us start our divine service by singing hymn 153. 153. This is my father's work. We should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Amen. Let us kneel down. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, on this uh, your holy Sabbath day, we kneel before your presence once again. Thank you for the opportunities you have granted this past week, for your blessings, for your taking care of us, 
and for many things is done to us, even though we have never known it. We ask uh, to be with us in our midst, that your Holy Spirit be uh, with us. Give us a willing heart to be obedient to whatever we preach uh, we hear today, and uh, be also with those that are sick and uh, the ones that are, are wandering. With those that are also that are in the valley of decision, that your Holy Spirit enlighten them so they can uh, uh, do uh, what the, the heart tells them to do. We ask us, uh, we ask you to be also with the leaders, with all every congregation around the world, and with those that are suffering persecution for your name's sake. We ask all of these in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Today, this is another Sabbath day. It's a wonderful day, isn't it? It is. Yes. We have nice temperature. Uh, it's, I mean, it's not so bright, but it's very comfortable, isn't it? So, and besides, uh, we're alive. We're on the land of the living. God, in His wonderful mercy, has granted us another day, has granted us another opportunity. So as we come together and, uh, and uh, we uh, celebrate this day, uh, let our hearts be joyful, let our, let our hearts be glad, and uh, let us have an attentive mind to what the Lord is going to speak to each one of us. But above all, let us... Uh, as God to give us, to grant us His grace that we may be transformed to His likeness. Amen. So, at this moment, we're going to, we're going to ask uh, Brother Gil to come up front and collect his guys and offer. today for being here and to be able to be here to worship this morning and for getting us safely here. I also would like to apologize to all of you for not being a better example. Because of my injuries, I my attendance in church, I would like to ask for an apology for all of you that I have not been a better example, that God may help me and pray for me that I will be a better example to everyone. <coughs> May, help us. May God help each one of us, not only you, sister. Yes. Each one of us. Yes. And yeah, thank the Lord for, for allowing me to come today. Um, we were at Heartland last week. It was a beautiful experience. Um, I had taken my kids there when they were little um, to the naturopathic doctor there. We do a lot of missionary work and sending young people to different parts of the world. It, is, it's, it was a beautiful, um, beautiful experience there. Uh, thank the Lord for sparing my goods to see her 51st birthday a few days ago. And Brother Gillis' 75th birthday. On the, 70, on the 75. 75. On the 75? 75. So I just thank the Lord for that. And keep Mike in your prayers. She was taken to the hospital last night. Uh, she had another seizure. 
But praise the Lord, they um, observed her, and she's okay, so she's back home. So she needs your prayers. I just praise the Lord for his mercy and grace. I just like to praise the Lord for going home. And, you know, it's, it's nice to go over places and and see people are living up the truth and know. There's no place like home, so don't misunderstand me. I love this place right here. But it was nice. I went there and I was waiting for Marie, and everybody passed by me, walked up to me, and shook my hand and said hello. You know, uh, that's a little thing, but it's a big thing. So I just like to praise the Lord. And, and also, I praise the Lord for 75 years. I, uh, I never thought I'd ever see years past 12 years old because it's since I was like that. I, um, the doctor's always told my mother, he's not going to make it. He's going to die. He's going to die. So I just praise the Lord that I'm able to be here with you guys just to see my 75th year and see the smile on your face. Yes, yeah, Sister Darlene and then uh, Yes, I forgot. My sister's not here today, and I would like for all of you to pray for her. She has some medical issues going on, but I just want to bring her up before the Lord in prayer. Okay. Sister Victoria. Yeah, I want to praise the Lord, Lord because I'm, I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have a, I had a big experiences in my country. Uh, last two past Sabbath, I, we had a, a, a big um, conference. conference in my city. And I saw a people that, that I knew long time ago mm -hmm. when I was, Little, it was a surprise because I didn't know that church is few members, but that Sabbath was full. Wow. And the most amazing thing, um, I found a, a, a friend, mm -hmm. it was a friend, and that surprised me a lot because I knew her so many years ago and she came to our church alone, and and she's studying now with us, Amen. receiving principal of faith. Amen. And she told me, Vicky, I'm here. Amen. And how how that happened? Mm -hmm. I remember when your mom talked talking to me, and I'm I'm now here, Amen. being part of this church. And it was a big surprise for me because. Uh, the people that you never know, that's the people is coming. Uh -huh. And another another thing, um, I'm very glad because a uh, prayer that I had a long time ago, it was answered. Amen. And, and another thing, uh, I saw my grandma and she's recovering. She's She's very, she was very happy. Amen. It's been a so special moment. Oh, and I had the opportunity to, to be with my family. Amen. In their houses and talk about the message. Amen. And Amen. it was, that, that travel was a blessing. Amen. Amen. That's it. Yeah. That trip. Yes, uh, it's she, uh, she turned, Grandma turned 99, and she's going to be 100. Wow. Amen. Uh, wow. If you look at her, it's just looking at Vicky like 50 plus years from now. <laughs> wow. Anyways, uh, anybody else wants to, anybody, anybody wants to say thanks? Or? Okay, so see this again, this is from the front, she has a special for us. He can't see it.
Happy Sabbath to all. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I'd like to bring, uh, first of all, greetings from Haiti. Last weekend, my brother and I got a chance to visit the island of, uh, or one of the Caribbean islands, and particularly the country of Haiti. So most people refer to Caribbean islands as Bahamas and, uh, and lavish vacations. However, in this case, my brother and I did not go for a vacation. It was quite the opposite of that. We, uh, through the strength and scripture, uh, completed a project of delivering school backpacks to about 60 kids with uh, a handful of other gifts inside each bag. We can share more on that um, later <coughs> when the material is, is available. I just have not had the time. But and needless to say, the brother and there were extremely grateful and they were, the experience as a whole was, was very beautiful for all, both us and them. Uh, so please accept greetings from the brethren in Haiti and they look forward. Uh, and um, we look forward to sharing with you some of those experiences that my brother and I had um, have lived through last weekend. We got back on a Sunday night, so we left on Friday morning around 2 o'clock in the morning and we got back Sunday night around 2 o'clock so it was a very extremely busy you know the three days that we were traveling but it was, it was beautiful mm -hmm. uh, also um, the brother Patrick how, however many of you know him he also was there for an unrelated trip that we just happened to uh, to run into each other but um it was, it was a blessing to myself, to George, uh, hopefully, and just to, to the brother there as well. <coughs> this morning I'd like to invite you to open your Bibles back in Luke chapter 15. And this has been read by Brother Joel in the opening statements or in the opening moments of the, of the divine service. He began by reading two verses. Now many of you know the book of Luke, chapter 15, especially as it refers to the parable of death. Right. Right. However, the verse that I, or the reason why I mentioned this story is not so much because I want to talk to you about the prodigal son. However, I want to emphasize the attribute or the character attribute of the Father as it uh, relates to today's study. Primarily, the two verses that we read, 31 and 32, right? What does it say? And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this is thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the verse 32 I want to focus your attention to right now because this is the subject, this is the underlying theme of today's study. The study is of justice and mercy. The father in the parable of the prodigal son had illustrated or exhibited the utmost amount of mercy that any parent can ever show. Wouldn't you agree with that? <laughs> for someone that has, um, that has um, given up on him, that had betrayed his family and, and, and given up and, and wasted all the possessions and all the, all the things that they had, the family wealth that has been gained for years, that was just given, and the young man wasted everything. Upon return, right, what were the two things? There was mercy and justice. Now justice has been served slightly earlier in that the man had the justice was quite, um, sort of circumstantial. We'll get more in that in terms of how he lived prior to returning. However, upon return, when he, when he realized his mistake and had come back, the father showed him nothing but mercy. Um, I'd like to also begin with another story of a young man that had been tried for a for a um, serious offense, and he was found guilty of that offense. However, he was the only son 
and his mother, his mother did not have her husband, he died, and this man was the only son, so naturally what the mother did, she went to the governor, or to the general of the army where this man served, and she pleaded with him. And the man said, um, the man said, because this man, this, this young man is guilty of, his, of this crime, justice demands his death. Uh, to which the mother resp responded, I do not ask for justice. The mother said, I ask for mercy. The, to which the man resp uh, responded, but he does not deserve mercy because he is guilty. He, he did the offensive crime. To which the mother responded, if he deserved or uh, to which she responded, it would not be mercy if he deserved it, but I am begging for mercy. When this man realized uh, the, the, the conversation, he had uh, compassion in him and he had let him go. In a similar fashion today, actually since the beginning of day, justice demanded or um, Justice, yes, justice demanded penalty for sin. <coughs> Correct. Adam and Eve had died, uh, had sinned. What was the the justice for their action? Death. Death, what right? Is death. They sinned as death. Now, in God's mercy, Adam and Eve were not killed immediately on the spot. Amen. And instead, God showed his mercy, and who died in their stead immediately? Christ. An innocent lamb, yes. who signified Christ. Christ that we will get to in, in just a few minutes. So bottom line, justice demands penalty for breaking the law of God. However, mercy is an unmerited favor, is grace by one supreme authority. In this case, in the example that I just explained to you, the two examples that we gave, one from the Bible and the other one from the real life example, in the, in the example of the Bible, it was the Father who showed the utmost mercy. And the example of the man, right? Who was the, the authority? Was the emperor, or the king, or whoever he was at that time. He had shown him mercy. Now let's go on in Ma Micah. Let's read a Bible verse that will help us go further in this uh, debate or discussion, justice versus mercy. In Micah, Chapter 6, verse 8, we read the following. Micah 6, 8. He has shown, he has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? To do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. I'd like to focus your attention on this Bible verse. There's three things that are identified here. Number one, the Lord requires of us to do justly, meaning to do what is right, right? Mm -hmm. He requires for us to do that which we know is right when it comes to the health reform. How careful are we with, with making sure that we eat properly? When it comes to some other health habits, how careful are we to those things that we know we are to do just? Second thing is love mercy. See, mercy cannot be done. You, you have to love mercy. You have to want to do mercy. Okay? And lastly, walk humbly with thy God. Meaning a continual or perpetual state of, of a balance between justice and mercy. So when you think of justice and mercy, one of the quotes in spirit of prophecy that, I'm, that is found in Testaments to the Church, Volume 4, page 209, describes as justice and mercy are, are twin sisters standing side by side. This is what Spirit of Prophecy throughout the entire writings of Ellen White is defining justice and mercy as twin sisters. One cannot go with the other. If that were the case, if justice could have gone without the other, then you and I would not have had the ability to be here today. We would not live because according to the justice, you and I, or Adam and Eve for that matter, would have been killed right? Mm -hmm. Or put to death because they sin. So, this is the bottom line. That in God's mercy, in His infinite love, He sought it necessary to give us both two things. Justice and mercy. Now, 
I want to read this quote now from Testimonies to the Church, Volume 9, page 167. It says, Let us remember that we bear a message of healing to a world filled with sin-sick souls. May the Lord increase our faith and help us to see that He desires us all to become acquainted with His ministry of healing and with mercy seat. So, notice here, it takes it a step further. It says that we are to be acquainted with two things, ministry of healing and mercy seat. Why did, why did it find necessary to remind us of the mercy seat and the ministry of healing? Let's go back a little bit into the Old Testament. To help us understand what this means, we need to look at history. We need to look at where it all had it all begun. And it started with the Ark of the Covenant. What was uh, inside the Ark of the Covenant? The Ten Commandments, Aaron's <coughs> Rod, and the Pot of Manna, right? So in other words, the, the commandments, meaning what instructed a man how to do justly. However, what was covering those artifacts which were found in the covenant? The mercy seat. The mercy seat. That's correct. The law of God was covered by the mercy seat. In other words, no matter how well could you have obeyed the law of God, mercy still proceeded. Do you understand this? No matter how good you, you did whatever you had to do and obey that law, mercy was covering it. Okay? Now, mercy and justice, these are the two inseparable things, as, as we already identified, the twin sisters, as they're being referred to in the prophecy, are the foundation of God's government. How do we know that? Let's go in the um, Exodus, chapter 26. And let's read a few Bible verses that will help us understand this. Remember I said we need to go back to the Old Testament. And we are. Amen. Exodus chapter 26, verse 34. What have we found here? And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. So it gives us an understanding. Number one, the mercy seat. It was God's instruction to erect this and, and put it, and where? Put it where? In the most holy place. And now verse 40, uh, pardon me, chapter 40, verse uh, 20, continues this thought. Exodus chapter 40, verse 20. It says, And he took and put the testimony into the ark, and set the staves in the ark, and put the mercy seat above the ark. It just further illustrates whatever we just described. The law was put in the ark. However, covering the ark was the mercy seat. So, this mercy seat, or the concept of putting the mercy seat above the ark, or covering the ark, was to illustrate that God's mercy was with the people of God as long as they have walk humbly with God as we've identified in Micah chapter 6 verse 8. Now this is where it gets interesting. Most people today, you and I, we want mercy. Right? We did something that we shouldn't have. A, a man was speeding when he shouldn't have been speeding or, or parking in an illegal park or ran the stoplight or ran the stop sign. He disobeyed the law. He goes to court and he expect or he pleads for mercy, mercy. at the mercy of the of the grace of the judge right that's normal this type of uh, scenario is seen by us today daily right maybe not us because we may not be speeding however others that are or uh, fall in the same place right so in other words they are they have disobeyed they have gone to ask for mercy However, they forget the key element here, as identified in Micah chapter 6, verse 8. They were to walk humbly before God. Okay? Now, Desire of Ages, page 762. Desire of Ages, page 762, it says, Through Christ, God's mercy was manifested to man. 
but mercy does not set aside justice. Continue reading. God's love has been expressed in His justice no less than in His mercy. Mm -hmm. Justice is the foundation of His throne and the fruit of His love. It has been Satan's purpose to divorce mercy from justice. But Christ shows that in God's plan there are un undiceably joined together. The one cannot exist without the other. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. By his life and his death, Christ proved that God's justice did not destroy mercy, but that sin could be forgiven, and that law is righteous and can be perfectly obeyed. Okay. So what do we find written here? Number one, how was God's mercy demonstrated? Through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Through his ministry, his, his life here, but mostly his death. Okay? That is how God's mercy was uh, manifested. <coughs> this concept is very strange, especially for, um, for some Protestant and some, uh, some Bible believers today to comprehend. Especially as it comes to the concept of doing justly, or the concept of, of not setting aside justice and only having mercy. Because today, many people believe that they can do whatever they want, because after all, Christ had died for my sins. That I am no longer under the bondage of sin. Right? That's the argument that people use today. And that's a partially accurate argument, okay? It's a partially ar accurate argument in that Christ did die for all. However, he did not excuse men <coughs> from following humbly and justly in the foot of the cross, mm. all right? Now, so mercy and justice, they, they're set in perfect balance, okay? Now, as humans, we have the tendency to be either too legislative, <laughs> Just. Right. All right, too just, and I tend to be myself in certain points. It's got to be done a certain way. It's got to be done this way. And a, 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 the opposite of that could be that we as humans may tend to say, all of that doesn't matter. Yes. Okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. Had Christ, Christ illustrated a perfect balance and unity of the two. Okay? So, let's move on a little bit and understand the importance of mercy, okay? How important is mercy to me today? How important is mercy in my life today? Christ Object Lessons, page 245. Let's read a few, a few paragraphs here. Christ Object Lessons, page 245. Now, this particular passage that I'm going to read now takes us back to um, a parable that we've studied so well about. The parable of the two debtors. Okay? And what do we find written here? In the parable, when the debtor pleaded for the delay, with the promise, have patience with me and I will pay thee, the sentence was revoked. The whole debt was cancelled. Mm -hmm. And as soon as given an opportunity to follow the example of the master who had forgiven him, going out, he met a fellow servant who owed him a small sum. He had been forgiven 10,000 talents. Mm -hmm. The debtor owed him a hundred pence. Mm. But when... I'm going to stop here. So what, what do we find here? What do we, what do we find in what is written so far? We yes. understand that there were two men. One owned a great deal of sum. And to oh. him was owed a small portion. A significantly smaller. When forgiven the greater debt, he should have sure. followed, as Micah said, Walk humbly and do justly, right? Which would have been and love mercy, which, which would have been ideal. Would have been mercy. Right? Mm -hmm. However, when he walked out, he only remembered the part that said do justly, yeah. mm -hmm. and he did that so well. What did he do? He so threw him in prison. Him. Let's keep reading. Keep reading. But he who had been so mercifully treated dealt with his fellow laborer in an altogether different manner. Mm. His debtor made an appeal similar to that which he himself had made to the king. 
but without a similar result. Mm. He who had so recently been forgiven was not tender-hearted and pitiful. The mercy shown him, he did not execute in dealing with his fellow servant. Exercised in dealing with his fellow servant. Thank you. He heeded not the request of the to the patient. The small sum owed to him was all that the ungrateful servant would keep in mind. Mm. He demanded all that he thought his due and carried into effect a sentence similar to that which he had been so graciously revoked from. Mm. Continue reading the next paragraph. How many are today mm. manifesting the same spirit when the debtor pleaded with his Lord for mercy he had no true sense of the greatness of his debt. Mm. They do not realize their helplessness. They do not accept the grace of God as a free gift. They are trying to build themselves up in self-righteousness. Their own hearts are not broken and humbled on account of sin, and they are exacting and unforgiving toward others. I want to stop here for just a minute, because when I read this, I was so humbled. Because I saw myself in a, in a reflection of this paragraph. When it said, how many are today manifesting the same spirit? When the debtor pleaded with his Lord for mercy, he had no true sense of greatness of his debt. We today do not realize how great a debt has the Lord paid for us. Mm -hmm. Yet when it comes to being merciful to our fellow man, in church, at work, otherwise, we are so exact. Mm -hmm. and, and especially as I was thinking, I was looking back in my memory, and I was trying to think of it, of an example in my life. You know, I may be good at healthy eating, right? But I may not be good at, let's say, Sabbath keeping. Mm -hmm. And when I see someone that's, uh, that's good at mm -hmm. Sabbath keeping, but is terrible at healthy eating, let's just suppose for the sake of the argument, yeah. what do I do to them? I hammer them for their improper eating habits, right? Because I am better than they are at that point. However, I do not realize that perhaps the, bro the brother or sister is much better in something else, right? And there's something that I could actually learn from him. This is, this is what was so humbling to me. And this is what was so eye-opening to me personally. And I plead that you find yourselves in the lines of this passage. Do not, and I plead with you, do not hammer people because you may have overcome a certain weakness quicker than someone else has. And I tell you, I was literally a little shaken when I read this. Some of us have come to this church, or any other church for that matter, for years, and we have taken the time to perhaps getting over what has been bothering us. Whereas others that have only come here for just a handful of months have not had the opportunity to have a closer walk with the Lord that you have. And they're still struggling. That's why the Bible asks us to, to do justly but love mercy. Love our brother. Love mercy. And I will continue this thought uh, with a few more passages. So, God's mercy can never be repaid. To can never be repaid. We, we like the <clears throat> servant who owed much to the servant, could never in his lifetime repay. Right. I want to give you a hint. Uh, you know that we did the the strength and scripture parables on or strength and scripture episode on all the parables. And in that parable or in the covering of this parable, George did an illustration. And I believe he did the math in saying that it, it would have taken him several lifetimes to have to repay the debt, right? Even as much as he owed, he could not, the man really, I believe, did not understand the magnitude. Whereas he owed or he demanded from a man to be repaid what could have been repaid in a week's worth of, of, uh, uh, of, of salary. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Several lifetimes, and you go and put someone in prison for a week's worth of, of thing, you know, a week's worth of debt. It is amazing. So God exalted 
and he extended his mercy to us, right? However, his mercy is conditional. Interesting. Not only did not only are we to walk humbly, that as as illustrated in Micah six eight, there's another condition. Go with me back to uh, Exodus chapter thirty four verse six and seven. We'll read several Bible verses. Exodus chapter thirty four verse six and seven. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands and forgiving iniquity and transgression of sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon children's children under the third and the fourth generation. <clears throat> so verse 6 and 7 of Exodus tells us that it's, it's a, almost a contradiction here. Notice, it says, verse 6, it says that the Lord is merciful and gracious and long-suffering, but in verse 7, he says, he will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon their children um, into the third and fourth generation. This doesn't make any sense, but it does. How does it do that? Ecclesiast, Ezekiel, pardon me. Ezekiel, chapter, keep your finger in Exodus, go to Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 13. What does it say there? What does it say in Ezekiel? Keep your fingers in Exodus, but go to Ezekiel 33, 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, and all his righteousness shall not be remembered, for his iniquity that he hath committed shall die for it. Okay? So here it says, when I shall say to the righteous, he shall surely live, right? But he trusts in his own righteousness and commit iniquity, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, with these two in mind, we clearly see that when we trust in our own righteousness, we will live. Just like when we read in Exodus that iniquity of the fathers will be followed to the children and to the third and fourth generation, upon which condition? if unrepented of or if not pleaded for mercy. Okay? This is the key. This is the difference between verse 6 and 7 where the Lord says, mercy and gra He is merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. His goodness and truth, His mercy and long-suffering are conditional mm -hmm. upon people coming and repenting, pleading for mercy. Remember, what were the Israelites required to do daily to have their sins forgiven? Bring sacrifice. Make an active restitution, right? They were spent, if you stole something, if you killed the, uh, something, or if you broke something, you had to make an active restitution. In a similar fashion, you had to go to uh, bring a sacrifice, meaning you had to plead and ask for forgiveness of God. Mm -hmm. In similar fashion here okay now something to further illustrate or to discuss this conditional uh, piece we was also found in something we as children have learned from our youthhood how many of you know the Lord's Prayer okay. most of us now right children how many of you know the Lord's Prayer you know it right what is found there as a condition for our health and happiness. Forgive us our sins. We forgive for also we forgive everyone the trespassing against us. Forgive us our sins as we have forgive as we forgive others. We say daily, or maybe using different words, but we don't realize that at times our sins are not forgiven because we have not forgiven others. Okay. I'd like to read one more paragraph from um, Steps to Christ, page 243. Steps to Christ, page 243. Jesus teaches that we cannot, uh, pardon me, Jesus teaches that we can receive forgiveness from God only as we forget others. It is the love of God that draws us unto Him. And that love cannot touch our hearts without creating love for our brethren. I, I Earlier, I read... Uh, Christ object lesson, you know, that very humbling quote. 
right? And here, it takes a step further. God cannot forgive us until we forgive others, until we're kind to others. And this is, this is what's humbling to me personally, because I find myself so just in certain aspects that I do better than others. Yes. However, in the things that I'm not as good at, as good as, I avoid those topics at all costs, right? That's what generally we do as humans. We avoid those topics, we don't ask, we don't talk, and when brought up, we always find a way to get out of it. Yeah. Oh, brother, you should keep the Sabbath holy. But you're not a vegetarian, or, or you eat milk and cheese and, and, you know, and eggs, but or you do this. We always tend to circle back to the topic we're so familiar with. Yeah. I remember a, an experience uh, in missionary school back in uh, Moldova, a teacher had shared with us. He said, a young man went to study in college and at exam, the way the exams are have been preceded in, in uh, Russia before, it was somewhat of a lottery. There were pieces of paper with questions flipped upside down and you would come in and you would just pull and you, you had to answer whatever question you read. So this man did his dissertation on um, on um, fleas, you know the little fleas that uh, that that uh, dogs have, and then they keep scratching themselves. Right. However, when he came, it was a, some sort of a science class. When he came, he pulled the paper and he read, explain to me a certain fish. Like, uh, explain to me uh, what does this fish do, or or talk to me about this fish. So what this man did? What did this man do? When he read the question and he realized that the question asked about the fish and he all he knows is the fleas, he started by saying, fish is an animal or mammal does not have fleas. Because if the fish had fleas, the fish would have to scratch itself and so forth. He, he, he kept saying all the things that the fish didn't have but referring to the fleas. A very primitive example and almost a little humorous. But this is what we as Christians do. When we ask or when we want to, when we're being rebuked of one thing, we immediately say but something else that we are most accustomed and knowledgeable of. So, uh, forgiving spirit appreciates God's mercy. God's mercy is conditional on two things. Continuous walking, in front of God and forgiveness of others. It's just something that we as individuals tend to overlook and tend to be more demanding of others than we are of ourselves. Okay? I'd like to continue the Steps to Christ, uh, page 36. Steps to Christ, page 36. It says, Jesus asked Simon a question in regard to the two letters. The parables of two letters is continued. Well, one owed his Lord a small sum, and the other owed him a very large sum. But he forgave them both. And Christ asked Simon, which debtor would love his Lord most? Simon answered, he to whom he forgave most. When have been, we have been great sinners, but Christ died that we might be forgiven. The merits of his sacrifice are sufficient to present to the Father on our behalf. Those to whom he has forgiven most will love him most and will stand nearest to the throne to praise him for his great love and infinite sacrifice. It is when we most truly comprehend the love of God that we best realize the sinfulness of sin. In other words, it is when you look the most closely in the mirror, it is when you best see the, the dirt or filth mm -hmm. or what have you on your face mm -hmm. or on your person. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. If you were to put a mirror at the end of this, of this uh, chapel, I could probably gather what I'm seeing in the mirror, but I could not understand exactly, I could not see a reflection of myself. So in, in other words, as it, is, as it is said here in Steps to Christ, page 36, it is when we most fully comprehend the love of God that we best realize the sinfulness of sin. Okay? Now, mercy illustrated 
in the parable of the prodigal son. I started by this, right? Mm -hmm. This was the opening scene, and then this is what I want to finish today's study with. The father, there are three characters, right? We have the prodigal son, the younger one. We have the older son, the just, and we have the father. <coughs> what did the brother do when the vertical son, the younger brother, returned. What did the older brother do when the younger bro brother returned? He immediately proceeded to <coughs> execute judgment or, and, and seek justice. He was out, he wasted everything. Why? Why did you even take him back? And on top of all, why are you giving him a feast? However, notice what the father did or said. Christ Object Lessons page 211. C-O-L, Christ Object Lessons, 211, those that are following along. Though you, the prodigal brother, will not join in the greeting to the lost, the joy will go on. The restored one will have his place by Father's side and in Father's word. He that is forgiven much, the same loveth much. But you will be in the darkness without, for he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Notice, notice that shift in the, in the dynamics, now that you understand this a little bit more. The brother was lost in his justice and in his right doing. Right? Just notice carefully, in this morning's Sabbath school, we talked about the Pharisee, right? And his obvious mistake or error in his lifestyle, right? right? He, his his puffiness, his self-sufficiency, right? And we clearly could see from a mile away that this man would go home unforgiven and unjustified. However, the brother in this case did not exhibit those exact traits, per se. He did not say, but I'm much better. I, I, he just said, look, Father, I've been with you all along, and I feel like, you know, you guys haven't given me a lamb to peace with my with my uh, friends, right? You can see that one is less self-sufficient and somewhat good in, in all his acts, right? But he's still lost, yeah. right? Why? Because as it is written in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen. This is the key. This is the key that uh, I hope that today, as we look at the parable of the, uh, of the parable of the uh, prodigal son, and as we remember the parable of the two debtors, we find ourselves, or we examine and identify which uh, which man are we: the man who had forgiven much, or the one who has been forgiven much and walked out and is squeezing the little guy that is forgiven little, okay? Mm -hmm. A few more things. I'd like to uh, read a few more passages from Testimonies to the Church, Volume 65. Now, how much mercy mm -hmm. should you be showing to, to your brother or sister? Page Testimonies 65. to the Church, Volume 4, page 65. Okay. 40. 40, 65. You would better err if you err all on the side of mercy and forbearance than on intolerance. Wow, that's pretty interesting. If you were to err at all, you're better off erring on the side of tolerance, mercy, and tolerance. Mercy and forbearance. Mercy and forbearance, thank you. Than that on the side of intolerance. This is what we are, this is, this is where we find ourselves. I tend to, I will be honest, I tend to err on the side of justice. This is the right thing to do. This is blah, 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 blah. And mm -hmm. I find through this study, that's why I said it was so humbling to me personally, that it went against everything I stood for and believed to be wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that you are to excuse sin and that you are to close your eyes on the guilty party. Mm -hmm. No, at all. However, this is talking about when the person has been identified in sin and you go to to plead with him, right? You have to show him mercy. Mm -hmm. Now, two more passages I will read. Education, 
page 294, ED 294, for those that are taking notes. Every true teacher will feel that should he err at all, it is better to err on the side of mercy than on the side of sovereignty. Severity. Severity. Okay? Better to err on the side of mercy than on the side of severity. Okay? And then one last paragraph we'd like to read on this topic from Testimonies to the Church, Volume 3, page 20 and 21. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 3, page 20 and 21. I will be selecting some passages, uh, some sentences, not all. 20 and 21. We must go no faster than we can take those mm. with us whose conscience and intellect are convinced of the truth we advocate. Mm. We mm. must meet the people where they are. But we should be very cautious not to advance too fast, lest we be obliged to retrace our steps in reforms. We would be, we would better come one step short of the mark than go one step beyond it. And if there is an error at all, let it be on the side next to the people. Testimony to the Church, Volume Three, Page Twenty and Twenty One. This is what the prophet is saying. She is seeing these things. And remember, this is written in the late eighteen hundreds. About about uh, 1870s, 1880s. This is when the Advent movement has, you know, the Advent Church has just been established and you know it was strong. The work has been developing, but it began to creep up that people began to see themselves better than others. Mm -hmm. okay. This is where she's saying, "You must not go faster than those whose conscience and intellects are convinced of the truth that you advocate." Okay. And then in reforms, because remember at that point, the health reform, the dress reform, the diet exercise, all those types of reforms were just being open and, and accepted and, and practiced. And she's saying in those types of reform, we better come one step short from the mark than go one step beyond. Mm -hmm. Naturally, we as people, we want to go above and beyond, yeah. right? That's what we do at work and school, <laughs> everywhere. We are taught from a very early age to go above and beyond. And naturally, when we come and we study the doctrine, we study the spirit of prophecy, we're like, okay, it says not to, you know, do X, Y, Z, I won't do X, Y, Z, and B. You know, that's what we do as people. Okay? Now, the work of restoration, the work of restoration as it is, as the father was restoring his, his, uh, his son, right? As Jesus is restoring us into the fall daily. Let's just briefly mention that. In Modern Blessings, NB, page 39. In Modern Blessings, page 39, NB, 39. All whose hearts are in sympathy with the heart of infinite love will seek to reclaim and not to condemn. Christ dwelling in the soul is a spring that never dries up. Where he abides, there will be an overflowing of beneficence. Benevolence. Benevolence. Yes. Uh, I have beneficence. Great. Where are you are? Model Blessings 39. I don't have the paragraph. Okay. Where he abides, there is an overflowing of beneficence. Okay? Beneficence. Yes. Beneficence. Yes, okay. That's the word. Beneficence. <laughs> okay? So again, all whose hearts are in sympathy with the heart of infinite love will seek to reclaim and not to condemn. What does that mean? You see a brother that's in need. You see a brother that's in sin. You see a member or a non-member that's, that's struggling with something. We are to reclaim. Meaning we're to go to them and win the soul. Instead of what? Instead of condemning. Oh, you should do this, 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 and this. Oh, you, oh, you got sick? It's because you did X, Y, Z. You know, those are types of actions that we are to do. We're to reclaim, meaning reclaiming the soul. Okay? 
uh, one more paragraph. Testimonies to the Church, volume 9, page 167. Let us remember that we bear a message of healing to the world filled with the sin sick souls. May the Lord increase our faith and help us to see that He desires us all to become acquainted with His ministry of healing and with the mercy seat. I started with a similar quote to this. I'm concluding with exactly the same quote. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 9, 167. Mm -hmm become acquainted with the ministry of healing. Right in the previous one I read, we are to reclaim. How? Through the ministry of healing and with the mercy seat. That above all, or in doing the, the work of reclamation, we are to show mercy. This is a, a, a strong rebuke to me personally. And I hope it is, it is maybe a gentle nudge to you to be kind, to be merciful to your kids, to your brothers and sisters, to your parents, right? Because they may not be as intelligent, or they may not have the knowledge you have. But we are so a little impatient occasionally, and a little rash, and a little, you know, abrupt, because we don't have patience, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 15. Mm -hmm. Go back with me. Go back to verse 32. Verse 32 is the, is the climax of this parable, as it seems to me. Because had there been uh, no verse 32, and the actions that the Father had taken in verse 32, then, then there would have been no lesson for me to learn here. Right? Notice verse 32. What did he say here? It was me that we should make merry and be glad. For this, thy brother was dead, and he's alive again, and was lost, and is found. Mercy. The Father says, it is, it is good that we should celebrate. We need to, to be thankful that your brother was lost and is now found. This is the ultimate illustration of mercy. Had there been no verse, had he just said, okay, well, the son came back, and that's great. You know, we'll accept you. But here he goes a step further. He goes, he does the work of reclaiming. Okay? This is, this is the key, brothers. And as it which is found in the Mount of Blessings, or in one of the verses in the Mount of Blessings, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, what does it say there? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Brothers, do you want mercy? from brothers around you, from sisters around you, from other church members, visitors, from God himself, be merciful, be kind. And only then can Jesus open the doors of heaven to yes. pour mercy on us. Amen. 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 We will sing number 215 215 mm -hmm. there is a gate that is then a John I hope that we know this song let's give George uh, an opportunity to play one uh, sentence we we'll, or we know it George we'll give you the opportunity to play uh, one stanza for us and then we'll
Christ, we come before you, dear Jesus, this afternoon. We're so thankful for thy mercy, for the cross, and for the sacrifice of thy dear Son for our sake. Dear Lord, now we ask that and plead that you may help us to show a similar mercy to our brethren in need as you have shown to us. We ask that you may draw lessons of life from all these parables and examples that have been written in the Bible for us. Dear Lord, help us to change. Help give us strength, for we ourselves cannot do it. Dear Lord, oh, let us have that humble spirit and walk humbly in front of you, that we may continue to listen to the voice of the Spirit. We pray all these things, dear Lord, not because we're worthy, but in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <coughs> we're dismissed. I do not believe there is a program for this afternoon. Um, my brother and I will have a presentation for you on the Haiti project later in the month or early next.